Hi, I'm Persia. And I'm Joey, and you are watching a Skype Life Nugget. And we are here today with the lovely Alice McIntosh. And Alice McIntosh is a, hello, <laughs> is hello. a <laughs> can't speak, nutritional therapist. And Alice helps, um, uses nutrition to find out what is wrong with clients and also uses it to help them get better. So we actually first met Alice at a friend's event, our friend Sadie, who runs Hip and Healthy. They were doing an event, and Alice was doing an amazing talk all about sugar, da, 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 and how it's oh, the devil. Oh. <laughs> ah. So Alice, first off, can you just tell us a little bit about how you got into this work as a nutritionist? Yeah, sure. Well, I originally wanted to, wanted to study medicine and was working my little socks off at school to go to medical school got a place and then actually decided that it just, you know what, it just wasn't quite right. Um, and so I did a similar sort of degree, like biomedical sciences, and throughout my time at university kind of discovered how amazing nutrition is and what you can do with the body uh, in just by eating the right things. And kind of got more and more into it and basically decided that, that was the route I wanted to go down. So um, I basically just went and did another degree in nutritional therapy. So by the time I finished studying, I could have been a doctor, actually, yeah. it took me seven years. But, um, yeah, and, and then started practicing um, and, and haven't looked back since. And how long have you been doing it now? So I've been practicing for almost three years. Wow, cool. Yeah, yeah. And so I see clients for all sorts of health problems. Um, people come into the clinic. I practice on Harley Street with the food doctor. And people come down to see us with anything from skin problems to hormonal imbalances, perhaps they might just want to lose a bit of weight and generally feel better, down to kind of more complex things like autoimmune problems, people who are having, who are having chemotherapy and, and, you know, everything in between. So quite amazing really what you can do with nutrition. Amazing. Fab. Well, something that we would like to talk to you about today is sugar. And, um... That's quite a big thing in my life, particularly at the moment, because I gave up drinking, as some people will know, a couple of years ago, and I've completely replaced my sugar intake from sweet rosé, which is what I was sort of like syrup, <laughs> syrup sweet rosé, Blossom Hill, <laughs> was my favourite, and uh, I've really kind of replaced that with mass chocolate bars and desserts, and mm. I, I'm really reliant on sugar, and I've just in the last couple of months come to realise quite how reliant, and my, my energy can be literally on the floor, and I can feel really faint if I don't have sugar regularly. So could you talk to us a little bit about sugar, and what the hell is going on? Because it's, it's quite in the media dramatic. so much as well. Yeah, it? yeah, it's hugely in the media it, at the moment. It really is. I mean, almost poor old sugar, because it's <laughs> in the fossil line, isn't it? <laughs> Particularly since Christmas, it's been in the media constantly, mm. and I think what you've just said... You know, it just it just shows how addictive it really can be, and and how much of an impact it can have on our bodies. I mean, you know, we are programmed to like the taste of sugar, like it's you know that's that's a natural human thing. Back when we were sort of foraging for food, um, when we only tasted sweet, we knew that it was safe. So you know, we like the taste of sugar. I think the issue is just that we like it a little bit too much because it's been estimated in the UK, believe it or not, that we eat thirty six kilograms of sugar a year, which is Almost the weight of a small, a uh, twelve-year-old child, which is just you know crazy when you think about it like that. But actually, if you look at everything that sugar's in, mm. it's in everything. So it's actually very easy to, to reach that thirty-seven kilogram mark quite mm. quite easily. We're talking, you know, obviously the sweets, the cakes, the biscuits, but also the hidden sugars that like are found soup. in food. This is like health food. You know, you buy a soup to be healthy, and it's blooming sugar in it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, the problem with sugar is, of course, it's going to have an impact on energy, like we've just said, but it can also have a lot of other things, a lot of other impacts on your body, you know, your sleep, your mood, your concentration, you can get fatigue and headaches. And also, it's, it's also been shown to be very strong with, you know, hormone imbalances and digestive problems and immune imbalances as well. So, you know, there's really no end to, to what it can do, I think. And you know, it does, and obviously weight gain is another thing that, that you know, a lot of people struggle with, and sugar is very heavily linked with that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really something that we all need to have, you know, we all need to make sure we're not eating too much sugar. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so with that in mind, what on earth do we do? Because obviously we love, we're programmed to love it. Joey yeah. really loves it. Mm. Um, and as you said, it's just in everything. But the, I think there's so much confusion out there as to, like, 
we hear different things of like this type of sugar is okay, but this type of sugar is bad. Yeah. So it's so confusing. So what are maybe three things that we can do to get better in this area? Okay, so the first thing I think people need to do is to differentiate the difference between added sugar and sugar that occurs naturally in mm -hmm. foods. Okay. So sugars that occur naturally, I mean, there's a lot of foods that contain sugar because essentially all carbohydrates eventually will break down into sugar mm -hmm. in the body. So you're talking here about all the starchy carbs, anything, even the good stuff like brown rice, and oats and bread, like whole grain breads and things like that, potatoes, all those types of foods naturally contain sugar as well as all the fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. But, and this is a big but, the things that, there are lots of other things that have sugar literally poured into them and that, that's the stuff that we need to watch out for. And so, you know, we're talking here as, sorry, go say again. I was just going to say exactly what you were going to say, what <laughs> sorts of things are those? Yeah. I mean, the, the, there is an endless list of stuff, but we're talking about a lot. Most of our breakfast cereals are poor, there's loads of sugar in there. A lot of our sauces, whenever we buy convenience foods, that sugar's normally in there. A lot of foods that are marketed as healthy, like cereal bars and yogurts, and you know, you name it, it really is in, in a lot of stuff. So, you and you know, obviously, we know that things like soda and ice cream and biscuits are very sweet innately. That's why we tend to be eating. So, really, what you've got to do is is cut out those foods that you know have had sugar put into them. Yeah. So obviously the, the, the stuff that's, that's, you know, that we clearly know has sugar in, but also the stuff that you, you know, you wouldn't necessarily think it would have stuff in there. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, I think another good piece of advice to people is you really got to get, get savvy in terms of knowing what sugar's named as, because there are so many different types of sugar and lots of different names for it, and food manufacturers will hide it from you. So, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, you've got to watch out for that. So anything that ends in O's, O-S-E, is normally a sugar of some sort. And also watch out for syrups, like beet syrup and cane syrup and things like that. Mm -hmm. So have a good look at the ingredients list, and then you will know whether something's got added sugar in it. Okay. Um, so that's my first piece of advice. Amazing, um, brilliant. That people really, really need to watch out for. The next thing is that they need to make sure that they combine foods together. Now, that's because if you eat foods that contain, naturally contain sugars, like, say, bread and pasta and um, fruits and vegetables, if you eat those and they're sort of on their own, then they will put your blood sugar up very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And this is the case as well if you're eating things with added sugars. So say you have like a banana or, or a smoothie or something. Again, even though it's a natural form of sugar, it's essentially just sugar on its own. And so blood sugar shoots up, and what goes up must come down, and your, your energy levels, then your blood sugar then drops very quickly, and that's when you find you're getting the headaches. As you were saying, Joey, you're feeling like faint and exhausted, yeah. um, you know, like, you, like you're about to pass out. Anything from that to the headache, to, you know, a horrible, bad mood. If you're having to be hormone at the same time, then it's a disaster for everyone, <laughs> including you and those around you. Yeah. So you've really got to prevent yourself. You've got to stop stop eating the foods that put your blood sugar up quickly and then allow it to fall. So what you essentially need to take away from this is to cut out the white refined carbohydrates. So we're talking the white bread, the white pasta, the crackers and the cakes and the biscuits, all the stuff we know isn't great for us. Mm -hmm. And actually... Thinking back to the first thing I said, a lot of those things also have a lot of added sugar in there as well. Mm -hmm. So cut those things out and replace them with, you know this already, but the whole grain brown rice and the oats, whole grain bread, whole grain crackers and things like that. Yeah. The brown, you know, fibrous rich stuff. Go for that. Um, and then the last thing you've got to do, this is really the, 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 the piece de resistance. Mm -hmm. You've got to um, make sure that you eat those, those complex carbohydrates, those whole grain carbs, with protein. So if you combine the protein with it, it completely changes the way that your, sugar, your blood sugar goes up. So you get a slight, go, it goes up a little bit, and then it drops, oh. but not anything too severe like last time. Okay. So for example, for... for um, for lunch, you could have a nice quinoa grainy salad with some chicken and lots of vegetables. And if you were going to have soup, you have to make sure there's either you know some fish or some pulses and beans in there or something like that, just to get that protein source in there as well. 
So that's a really, really, really key point. And you're doing that for all of your meals and all of your snacks as well. So like if you had fruit, I remember you saying at the Hip and Healthy talk mm -hmm. that if you have some fruit, have some nuts with it because there is a lot of sugar, even though it's naturally occurring in fruit. So your yeah, blood sugar exactly. will go up. Yeah. Speaking... Don't, eat, don't eat fruit on its own um, okay. because it will shoot your blood sugar up almost just as quickly as you know, a chocolate bar in some cases. That is almost like the secret tip that is the most useful because I would never, I was always just like, oh, well, it's fruit, it's got to be good for you, like five packets or like five mangoes later. <laughs> <laughs> a fruit bowl later. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. You, you've really got to watch out for those added sugars, it's like for, for those, for the fruits and things like that. So um, don't overdo those types of foods and really watch out for those white refined carbohydrates as well. Those really should be cut out because they're not offering you very much. Mm -hmm. Um, now, the last thing, we're talking about balancing blood sugar. The last thing I'm going to say to everyone is that when you, you really want to get this right first thing in the morning. You want to get this right first thing of the day, which is, of course, breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that means, essentially, you should not skip breakfast because a lot of people who fall into this sugar trap mm -hmm. often aren't hungry in the morning and then perhaps have a coffee or a Diet Coke or something mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock. And then you're starving at lunchtime and, you know, end up overeating at lunch and actually have a lot of sugar. You really want to avoid doing that. So you get it right first thing in the day and you really set your blood sugar up in a balanced way for the rest, for the rest of the day. So what you're again going for is protein with complex carbohydrates. So you could have, if you're going to have oats or muesli, sugar-free muesli, then that's fine. But you must put your nuts and seeds on top of that. If it's a sort of hot summery day, you want to have some fruits, again, fine, but nuts and seeds with that, um, and perhaps some Greek yogurt or something like that. But the, to be honest, my main tip, really, for people who want to really cut sugar out and really struggling with, with sugar, is to actually have a savoury breakfast, because the more sweet your breakfast is, the more you tend to crave sugar for the rest of the day. So my number one breakfast is eggs. So two eggs, half an avo, some rye bread, Perfect. <laughs> we actually had um, scrambled eggs, avocado, and we threw we threw some bacon in there as well. Yeah, eat, eat bacon, unsmoked. <laughs> unsmoked, gotcha. <laughs> if possible, yeah. But that that's fine, you know. You can pretty much have any carbs and, and protein you want, um, as long as it's complex carb and as long as it's you know lean protein. Um, and so, yeah, those are the sorts of things you really want to be going for. And, and interestingly, if you're someone who is also struggling a little bit with weight, not that you girls are at all. But well, if we've you, had our moments, <laughs> Alice. We've had our moments. <laughs> yeah, so you essentially want to go for, um, if, if you have, it's been shown that if you have protein with your breakfast, yeah. and then you're, you've been shown, people have been shown to eat 200 calories less for that whole day. Wow. So... Actually, you have a slightly more for breakfast and get your protein in there and your blood sugar is kept balanced um, and you therefore don't end up eating as much throughout the day. So weight loss tends to come more easily. Brilliant. So handy. Okay. And three points. Three. So, okay, let's just quickly recap on all of those things. So the first thing was... First thing... <laughs> in a nutshell. In a nutshell... I forgot what it was. First thing, cut out added sugar. Yes, that was it. Second was com not combine. No, that was later. That was later. And then the second thing would be to always make sure you balance your blood sugar by having complex carbs with protein together. Yes, excellent. Um, and then lastly, and that's with every every meal and every snack, mm -hmm. but particularly breakfast when you really want to get it right. So first thing in the in the day, within two hours of waking up, have a balanced breakfast without any added sugar and that should set you up very nicely. You mentioned briefly snacks. Now my problem doesn't really lay in the three meals a day. I'm all right actually. I'm quite healthy and quite balanced. It is the snacks. So can you recommend any good snacks for on the go instead of chocolate bars which are healthier basically and not full of sugar? Okay good snacks on the go that are better than chocolate bars and yep. lots of sugar. Um, that's a very, very good one because people really struggle with it. I recommend little protein bars. Um, now, I don't mean like 
ones that sort of bodybuilders eat. I mean, w- ones that are more like bounce bars or pulsing bars. I don't know if you guys have heard of those. They're kind of becoming more available, actually, as demand is going up. Mm-hmm. And they're really great if you quite like something sweet. So that sort of 4 p.m. slump. Yes. Um, something, they're basically just little protein bars that are made with nuts and seeds and a bit of protein powder in there. And something like that with a cup of tea is perfect. It goes down the tree. And also, yeah, what about those little naked bars? Yeah, those are good. You've got to be careful. They're all completely natural. They don't have lots of rubbish added into them. Though you want to perhaps, some of them you might want to have some with some nuts and seeds because they sometimes don't have as much protein as they could do. Yeah, okay. that's so are a good replacement for most, yeah, and mm-hmm. yeah. they're a good replacement for most uh, chocolate bars and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. Oh, Alice, it's been so great. But I, I often find as well that, you know, it's the first week that people really, really struggle with. Yeah. Once you've got that first week sorted and you, you've kind of kicked that sugar habit, you're, you start to really form more healthy habits and you find that your blood sugar is more balanced and you're not craving sugar as much. And you you tend to sort of, that, that's sort of hard part over. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I don't know whether you guys have, have noticed this as well since you've stopped having as much sugar, but you also find that your taste buds become a lot more sensitive to sugar. So within like mm-hmm. three weeks, you'll have a sip of like someone's juice and you'll be like, yeah. Wow, that's that so happens. Sweet. Persia sometimes tries my snacks, and she is overwhelmed by yeah. the amount of sugar. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. for me, it's yeah. She's like, "There's not enough. There's not enough." <laughs> Get me more. Um, yeah. This is great. This has been so useful, Alice. Thank you so much. Where can people find out more about the work that you do online? Um, okay, yeah. So my the best way to find out more about what I do is on my website, which is uh, www.alicemackintosh.com. Um, so yeah, you can find out all about what I do there, and I'm on Twitter as as uh, Alice Macintosh as well. But I, I mean, you know, I see clients on a day to day basis at the clinic on Harley Street, which is which is a food doctor clinic. Um, as I said, for all sorts of things. So one to one work. I do lots of corporate work as well. So I go into like I did for Hip and Healthy, go in and do big talks with people or little workshops with people as well, as well as doing lots of media work, you know, things like that too. So but if you want more information, you know, drop me a line on Twitter or get on my website and, and you can find my contact details on there. Fab. Thank you so much, Alice. It's been really helpful, actually. And something that I think I've been putting this off because it's not that bad, I've been telling myself, but when it affects your energy in, in such a big way you know, it does become quite important. So I'm looking forward to implementing some of the advice that you've dispensed today. Thank you. (laughs) No worries, guys. My pleasure. Thank you. And we will chat with you soon. If you'd like a life nugget and a weekly dose of happiness and motivation straight to your inbox, sign up at addictivedaughter.com and join us and thousands of others in getting addicted to the good stuff today.